Hello boys, I hope everyone's safe and well and enjoy being at school and I hope you enjoyed our last video. Now I'll pass you on to Robin for our activity. Take care. Well good evening boys, I hope uh, you're all doing well and I hope you've had a good uh, couple of weeks. Uh, tonight we're just going to do a little game here as you can see uh, it's called Higher or Lower. Um, You've maybe played a game like this before, but basically the name of the game is you're going to be shown something and then you have to decide whether the next thing in the sequence is going to be higher or lower. So it's just for a bit of fun, it's just a bit of a guessing game. So we're going to do two rounds tonight. And as you can see there, round one is a shopping basket. I don't know if any of you are experts, maybe you go shopping with your your parents or maybe you do the online shop you help out with it but uh, we're going to see here how much you know so we're going to show you an item and the first one we're going to tell you how much it costs then we're going to show you another item and you have to decide whether the next item is higher or lower than the one before it so here goes so here's our shopping basket here and you can see the first item is beans I'm sure some of you boys like beans Maybe some of you aren't too keen on it, but you can see a ten of times baked beans cost 85 pence. Our next item then is a big bag of full original Doritos. So this is the big bag we're talking about, 180 gram bag. So do you think is it higher or lower? So it says there you can stick your thumbs up for higher, thumbs down for lower. Obviously I can't see you whether you're doing that or not. But think higher or lower now. Well, the answer is it's higher. 99p. Okay, sometimes they're a bit higher than that. Maybe they're in special offer. So well done if you said higher. Our next one then. As you can see there, a big bag of Maltesers. Uh, very nice indeed. Uh, do you think a bag of Maltesers, big bag of Maltesers, is higher or lower than 99p? Well, the answer is it's higher, it's just higher. It's a pound. Now, this must be a very well priced shop. This person's got these numbers on, so a pound there for a bag of Maltesers. So that was higher. So, on to the next one. I'm sure this is your favourite, boys. This is probably the favourite thing you've seen so far. I'm sure you all love to eat lots and lots of broccoli. I'm sure you're all experts in this because you buy this every day. So is broccoli, is a, I think it's called a floret of broccoli or a head of broccoli. Is that a higher or lower than a pound? Choose now. The answer is... It's lower, okay. So 60p, great value there. So well done if you got that right. Next one then. Now, oh, the old favorite pint of milk, where would we be without a pint of milk? So is a pint of milk, does a pint of milk cost higher than 60p or lower than 60p? You decide now, a few seconds to decide here. And the answer is, did you go for higher? I hope not because the answer is lower. Pint of milk is 55p. Okay. A litre of milk is about 70 and two litres is around a pound. Um, so there you go. So well done if you said lower than that. So the final one then. Pepsi Max. So does a can of Pepsi Max cost more than 55p or less than 55p? Thumbs up for higher, thumbs down for lower. The answer is coming up now. It is. It's higher. So a can of Pepsi Max costs more than a pint of milk, so that's higher. So if anybody got all those right, I want you to reach around and give yourself a big pat on the back. You did really well. So just looking at these here, we can conclude that healthy food is indeed cheaper than junk food. So there's probably a moral to that story. If we went and bought a 
brought away in a pint of milk. That was almost, you know, just not much more than a bag of Doritos. So there we go. OK, good job. So we've got one more round here. And so the next round is populations of countries. So that means like how many people live in different countries. And it's the same idea. We'll show you a country and then you have to decide if the next one is higher or lower. So we're going to start off here. Our starting point is the UK. That's got 67 million people living in it. So your first question is, does Spain have more or less, higher or lower than 67 million? Okay, so make your choice now. And the answer is, it's a good bit lower. It's got 20 million less, so 46 million people living in Spain. Our next country then is Canada, the biggest country by area in uh, North America. I think it's the second largest country by area in the world. So maybe there's loads of people live there. Do we think there's more people live in Canada than in Spain, or do we think there's less? So more, if you think it's more than 46 million, higher or less than 46 million lower. Well, let's find out the perhaps surprising answer. Well, there we go. For such a big country, it only has 37 million people living in it. Um, and most of those people are concentrated sort of around Toronto uh, and over in the East Coast. Um, very, very big country, though, but lots and lots of open uh, open countryside and probably lots of bears and other interest in wildlife as well. So Canada was lower than Spain. I'm sure that probably caught uh, a lot of you out. So let's try the next country. Oh, oh, vive la France. France, okay, home of Asterix and, uh, I don't know, French bread and stuff like that. And Kylian Mbappe, if you're into football. So does France have a higher population than Canada? Has France got more than 37 million people? So decide now if you think it's higher or if it's lower. Okay, the answer's coming up. 65 million people. So quite similar to the UK population. So considerably higher than, than Canada, even though obviously it's a smaller country than Canada. So France has got 65 million people. So two left, on to the next one. Uh, Germany, home of Bratwurst sausages, Jurgen Klopp, and of course, Littles, very important. So does Germany have a higher population than 65 million or a lower population than 65 million? Okay, you may not know, Germany used to be two countries until 1990 when they reunified West Germany and East Germany. So decide now if you think it's got more than 65 or less than 65 and the answer Coming up now, considerably more there, 83 million people live in Germany, lots and lots of people there. So one country left, and that is Japan, the land of the rising sun and uncooked seafood. Okay, so Japan, okay, so Japan are a set of islands out on the east coast of Asia, off the coast of, of sort of China. Um, do we think then Japan has got, would it have more than 83 million people? I don't know. What do you think? So choose now, higher or lower. And the final answer is, wow, higher. 126 million people live in Japan. That is a lot of people. Okay, the main cities of Japan, like Tokyo and places like that, do have a lot of people living in them. So 126 million people, that's like nearly double the population of the UK. Very good indeed. So again, if you got all that right, give yourself a 
a big round of applause because that was very, very tricky. Okay, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed that. So um, we'll see you again soon. I'm going to pass you on now to Sarah, who's going to do the story for you today. Bye. Today's um, Bible story is of Zacchaeus. Um, and as you know, we're looking at different characters in the Bible who had specific jobs to do. Um, so today we're looking at a tax collector. And I thought um, that we would look at Zacchaeus. So, um, Jesus and his disciples were on their way from Jerusalem and they passed through the city of Jericho um, and that was where Zacchaeus lived. So Jesus was with a large crowd of people as he was walking um, to Jericho because so many of them wanted to hear what he was saying and what he was teaching. And there was a man in Jericho called Zacchaeus and he was the chief tax collector. And across the, the centuries, people have been taxed and most people dislike it. Um, taxes are used to pay the government um, for leaders and military. And back in Jesus' day, the Roman government would take a census to find out how many people were living in specific towns and cities. And then they would use that list to charge people um, their taxes um, and how much then they owed the government. So the tax collectors then had the responsibility to go from door to door and demand the amount of money that the government said. So it could be ten pounds, it could be fifty pounds, it could be thousand pounds, and um, it was it was different depending on what you owned and where you lived. Um, and a lot of the tax collectors had a love of money and it had been a source of temptation, um, which means that they would add a little bit extra on to each person who they went to collect the money from. And then they would take that bit that they overcharged them as their own and keep it for themselves. So they were getting very, very rich. And because of this, tax collectors had a really bad reputation around the cities for gaining money um, through bad ways, so by corruption. Um, and a lot of people in the town did not like Zacchaeus because he was the tax collector for that town and he had been taking money that wasn't supposed to be taken as his. And they didn't like that. Zacchaeus, however, had heard that Jesus was coming to his town. And he was really excited to see him because obviously he had been listening to different people um, talking about this man who was coming to their city. And he wanted desperately to see Jesus and to hear what he had to say. But the crowd was way too big and Zacchaeus was a very small man. He couldn't see over um, everybody in front of him. And because the crowd was so big, he was being pushed to the back. And he realised very quickly that he wasn't going to be able to see anything unless he did something about it. So he decided to run ahead into the town where he was walking to and find a tree. Um, and once he found the tree, he figured that if he climbed to the top of this tree and sat there, he could have a really good view of Jesus and hear exactly what he, had to, he was coming to say. So when Jesus got to the tree, he looked up and he noticed that Zacchaeus was in the tree. And he said, Zacchaeus, hurry down. Today is the day that I want to be a guest at your house. Let's have dinner together. Now, this is very strange because Jesus had never met Zacchaeus and Zacchaeus had never met Jesus. But Jesus knew who he was because God had been able to tell him. Um, and a lot of the people who were sitting around probably didn't believe that Jesus was talking to this man who everybody thought was so mean and horrible. But Zacchaeus was so excited to have Jesus at his house. Um, and teachers like Jesus usually avoided tax collectors because they had such a bad reputation and they didn't want to be seen with them. Um, but Zacchaeus warmly welcomed Jesus into his house um, and began to prepare a meal for him. But the people outside were angry and said, this man has gone as a guest into the house of a sinner. As Zacchaeus was talking to Jesus over dinner, um, at the end of what Jesus had to say, Zacchaeus stood up and told Jesus, listen, I will give half my belongings to the poor. And if I have cheated anyone or if he's taken money that wasn't supposed to be his, I will pay back four times as much as I took. 
Jesus said to him, Today a person has been saved in this house. This man is a Jew also. I have come back to seek and save the lost. Jesus did not pick the wisest or the most popular person to be his closest friends. He didn't pick the smartest or the richest, but he looked at the person's heart. While many people today look at the outward appearance and see all the possessions that people have, God looks at the heart. If today you feel down or unworthy, if you know you have done some things that are bad or have told lies, God promises that he will forgive you if you ask him. So today, if you want to ask God for forgiveness, then he promises to forgive you. And just like Zacchaeus, you can become his friend. I really love this verse. It's just two words. Um, um, they're just, it's just a short verse, but I think it's so important. It's from 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, and it says, pray continually. Now, there's verses before and after that I want to read to you. So it says, rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 to 18. Now that we have read this verse about prayer, I want to pray with you. So let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, you chose to come to Zacchaeus' house and have dinner with him, even though he was a bad man who had a bad reputation. That is how you love people and that is how you love us. Thank you for loving us that way. Help us to love others like you love them. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. So let's try this week as you go to school or as you're with your friends or with, when you're with your family. Um, remember the story of Zacchaeus um, and remember um, that sometimes we do bad things that are wrong and that's okay because everyone's going to make mistakes. But we need to ask God to forgive us and help us not to make those mistakes again. And just like Zacchaeus, we can become Jesus' friend if we haven't already. Thanks so much for listening and we'll see you in the next couple of weeks.